Hey guys, it's me, Nikki B, the elegant and regal one. How you guys doing today? Welcome to Say What Wednesdays. I am your host again, Nikki B. Immediately after me, we have DJ Hot Rod. Shout out to founder and CEO, DJ Marvin Banks, who makes the Z100 The Beat platform possible. Guys, keep it locked to Z100 The Beat. We have the hottest DJs around. We have DJ Ace, DJ Vision, DJ uh, Hot Rod, DJ Hey Mr. DJ, DJ Houdini. Guys, listen, um, I also want you to keep uh, DJ Hot Rod in your prayers, guys. Um, we know whatever it is, the Most High has, has it under control, but I ask that you guys uh, send your prayers and wrap your arms around him in his time, his family, in his time of need. Now, Guys, I am on Facebook Live as well as Instagram and Z100thebeat.com. So when you hear me go back and forth, we are doing interactive radio. Now, today, 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 I know um, I'm already hitched, I'm married. However, do you know um, if you're dating a psychopath? How would you know if you're dating a psychopath if you're out there on the dating scene? Now... Dating during the pandemic is already difficult, but it's like now you got to weed through all. On all serial killers, they could be your con conniving co-worker who somehow seems to just get away with everything. Or maybe they're just that totally normal guy who served you coffee this morning. So how would you know? Nikki B, how, how come you're telling us about psychopaths, but how would I know? how to identify one. Well, baby, you came to the right show today. Now, psychopaths look like you and me, but there's one big difference. You don't have, they don't have a conscience. You have one, they don't. They can harm others with absolutely no sense of remorse, no guilt, no shame. It's no big deal to them. It's like, I'm waking up, the sun is out, I'm gonna stab you in your back. Oh my gosh, look at the birds. I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to cut you off at the knees. They can harm others with absolutely no sense of remorse or guilt. To any onlooker, a psychopath can slip through life unnoticed. They're not always, look at me, I'm a psychopath. Hey, look at me, look at me, mom, look at me, Janet, look at me, Tom. No, they, can, they usually weave in and out. They can blend in with the best of us. They are friendly, they are likable and charming and not at all over the top. But for those who are unfortunate enough to become close to a psychopath, a nightmare will begin to unfold. Hi. you are dating a psychopath and I'm gonna tell you how they behave during relationships do you know um, when I get on here and I talk to you guys about this stuff this is not just me pulling it out of my rabbit out of my hat as Eric and I talk about when I go up and down the timeline I hear women saying oh, I can't find a good man oh girl he was crazy oh she was crazy because let me tell y'all something men women are psychopaths too she's a beautiful bombshell who will blow your life up and keep One way to know if your partner is a psychopath is how the relationship starts. When you first meet a psychopath, things move extremely fast. They hit the gas. You go from zero to 270. They tell you how much they have in common with you, how perfect you are for them. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I found my soulmate. Oh my gosh. Like a chameleon, they mirror your hopes, your dreams, and insecurities to form an immediate bond of trust and excitement. So sometimes they can also mimic your trauma and you guys end up trauma bonding. They consistently and constantly initiate communication. With songs, jokes, poems, and uh, uh, compliments and everything. You know, I mean, listen, I come from the days of MySpace where people would put 
uh, uh, little glittery stuff all over your page. They'll cover your page with everything. They inbox you. They'll write you on every platform. Psychopath. Honey, I'm, when I tell y'all I came across a psychopath, OMG. Mr. Community Property was a psychopath. You okay? It's to each his own, and if a man, some men love crazy women, then just, you know, stay prepared to have your life in an uproar. Because crazy, you know, crazy never shut off. When you think, okay, I done got her, she mine, I'm in love, and you would like for her to just temper it a little bit, crazy never sleeps. Crazy never shuts off. Even in they sleep, they plot on how to get you. So if that's what you into, brother, to each his own. But yeah, some men, y'all like those crazy women, hey, buckle up, because it's going to be a bumpy ride. They prey on your emotions with pity plays and sympathy stories. Oh my God, my dog died, my grandma died, I lost my job, my car broke down, I lost my wig. I An hour ago, but they'll make it, it, it it's going to be flipped around. An abundance of sob stories can sometimes be a sign that you're dating a psychopath. Now, let me tell y'all something. Trauma is one thing. If you've gotten with somebody who has a lot of trauma and they're working through it, that's one thing. A psychopath just make up stuff. They pull like a rabbit out of their hat, a rabbit out of their you know where, and just, it, it, it's a lie. You get a lie, you get a lie, you get a lie, you get a lie. So the thing is, you quickly find a soft spot in your TV, all of that stuff. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. forget what you have seen on TV. They often seem cute and innocent at first. Forget again, forget everything you see. The narcissist with a flash of car. They'll probably mention their abusive ex who who's still in love with them. They say that all they've ever wanted was some peace and quiet. They hate drama. Oh my God, I don't like drama. You don't like drama, me either. And yet you will soon come to. glass so are the days of your life yes mr you B. know uh cox didimo says you can't know yet until he becomes one you can't know that they're a psychopath until they become one um you know what mr cox psychopaths aren't just trans they don't transform into psychopaths overnight baby they happens alone when the sperm is traveling into the egg and then the chromosomes and all that stuff I can't put my finger on it but I promise you when I do more research I'm gonna find it for you but it's a known fact that psychopaths are not just it's not a switch that comes on baby they're born with that stuff this predatory behavior it's you are the prey and they are the predator I'm just trying to show you hey to see if you are dating one but I get it but this is not something they just wake up doing no they tend to hurt animals as a kid they tend to push children uh you know hurt other children they tend to uh start, try to start fires you 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 gotta know who you getting in in into bed with some of y'all you look some people like to hop in the bed before getting to know the person let me tell you after she done put that thing and that thigh out on you, she done dropped it low on you, then them real colors gonna come out. She may even show you why she dropping it down on you. Just, just look, just the messenger. They evolve, they involve you in their own versions of love triangles. So once you are hooked, the triangulation starts in, it sets in. 
They surround themselves with former lovers, potential mates, and anyone who has provided them with added attention. So just when you think you numero uno, in your mind, you numero uno. In her mind, you number 10, 20, 30, or 40, or his mind. This includes people that the psychopath may have previously denounced and declared you superior to. I got somebody. My next, my next woman going to be better than you. She better than you. The man I got better. Yeah, they done went around. They done boasted this grandiose idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it gets better. This makes you feel confused and creates the perception that psychopath is in a high demand at all times. Child, look at it. Look, look, he liked me. Look, he texted me. Look, she liked me. Look, she doing this. And all the while, it's just the rules to keep you hanging on, to keep you hanging on so you don't go nowhere. When you're dating a psychopath, confusion and power games are the norm. So get ready. Remember I said fasten your seatbelts because, baby, it's going to be a bumpy ride. You honestly think, yeah, you, you, you might love a crazy woman now. I, I'm going to pray for you later. Number four, they constantly rewrite reality. Dating a psychopath often involves being subjected to a lot of manipulation. Baby, they pull your strings better than a, than a, 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 a puppeteer does a marionette. You just, you just, just look, you're just everywhere. You don't know. You just everywhere. You don't know your right from your left. You just don't know. And you just everywhere. She yanking you from the north, east, south, and west. Or he yanking you from the north. Gallus, you're lying. Instead of actually addressing their inappropriate behavior, somehow it always becomes your fault because you're too sensitive and you're too crazy. Toxic people condition you to believe that the problem isn't the abuse itself. You got to remember, there's that word condition. Like we condition our hair, we train our hair to get it right. We condition our body when we want to exercise. Well, guess what? They condition you to function in toxicity. They condition you to function in being manipulated. They condition you. They condition you where you don't know your left from your right. And when you finally get out of it, you got to take a breather from everybody. You ain't going to want to see no Peter or no vagina. You just going to want to be left alone. I promise you. Nikki B no firsthand. Toxic people condition you to believe that the problem isn't the abuse. Oh, no, 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 no. But instead, your reactions to the abuse. Yes, Mr. Bendros. Okay. Number five says they accuse you of feeling emotions that are intentionally provoking. Well, what you talking about, Nikki B? You saying intentionally provoking. What kind of feelings are you talking about? They call you jealous after blatantly flirting with an ex. When I tell you gaslighting to the max, they out there flirting with somebody, but then they call you jealous. You sitting there, you watching, and that's another thing. They twist the perception of what you see with your own two eyes. You're watching them flirt. You hearing them flirt. I mean, it's like, I'm not flirting. You just jealous. You're just insecure. They call you jealous after blatantly flirting with an ex, often done over social media networking, the entire world to see. They call you needy. They use your manufactured reaction to garner sympathy from other targets, trying to prove how hysterical you've become. I can't even talk to nobody. You know, she don't want me to look at nobody. She don't want me to be near nobody. I can't talk to nobody, girl. He won't let me do nothing. All I did was wink at him and he got mad. All I As ridiculous as it sounds, as you heard it sound come out of my mouth, that's how some of them behave. As ridiculous as it sounds. 
Ooh, it's some fine holes in here, but get mad when you get upset. When I tell you I've been, I've had my share of psychopaths, thank you very much. I told the Lord, if there's anything in me that's drawing these cretins to me, drive it out. I was broken. I was broken and I couldn't see straight. I was broken down on the inside. That's how it happened. When you're not fully whole and ready, don't jump into a relationship. I was not fully ready to be in a relationship. So I ended up with psychopaths on my doorstep. Literally, I had one that would bang on my door day and night. I had a psychopath that had me so warped and so twisted thinking. He would go out with different women and tell me I was insecure. We're supposedly in a relationship. He was out there uh, spreading it wide and laying it low, but telling me I'm insecure. It's like, what? They will twist the narrative to fit their script. One guy actually stopped calling me for a month and then picked up the phone. Hey, baby, I was, oh, no, oh, no. Psychopath tendency. Coming to find out they have, see, when you, especially when you're a good woman or a good man, they ain't going to want to let you go. They want to be greedy and hold on to you and still be out there doing their thing. Not I said the cat and not I said the dog. That's just not going to work for me. They use, again, they use your manufactured reactions to garner sympathy from their t new targets from other targets you probably want Ocean down y'all i used to be the sweetest woman i'm sweet now but i used to be so sweet kind caring and loving but after getting out of those psychopath relationships i became a guarded person and i just didn't believe anything you showed me at face value honey i had to di dissect you i had to go to the upper room i had to go to the throne and pray i had to get on my knees and cry out lord you gotta tell me if this one's for me because if not i'm okay with being a a, a, a cat lady for the rest of my life i'm okay being by myself there's no way i wanted to do this again i got out of that abusive relationship only to run into psychopaths oh my god oh my god oh my god i know some of y'all can identify with this because y'all sitting there like lord she yeah I mean, if i'm in your closet just 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 say ouch and hallelujah because you know i'm in your closet when you away from them you feel like you got to go through recovery like you got to go through aa in the 10 step program and it's the truth you've noticed them pathologically lying and making excuses another clear a clear clue that your partner might be a psychopath is the constant line they lie from sun up to sundown they lie oh the dog out the door and you, you looking right at the dog the sun ain't up and it's night the sun up and it's nighttime it's raining and it's snowing outside it's like my god do you really have to lie they will lie about everything everything there's always an excuse for everything even things that don't require having an excuse why you know why is the garbage still in the house oh well you know i had to run to the store and i forgot something and my car broke down and it's like it, it was a simple question i forgot to take you know just little stuff but they will lie till they can't lie no more do you hear me they make up lies faster than you can question them they constantly blame others it's never their fault let me tell you something when you take a when when you how you know you dating a psychopath they never take accountability they blame everybody but themselves when 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 they say well you know what i accept the part that i played then you know okay there's some human life on the inside but when it's always it's my ex fault it's the dog fault it's my boss's fault it's my neighbor fault it's my carburetor fault you like you know what now it's the time for you to just pack your little raggedy bags and scat or if they're in your house put them out there on the curb and tell them to hit the road jack they spend more time rationalizing their behavior than improving it even when caught in a lie they express no remorse or embarrassment You've been caught cheating. Oh, well. You'd have been caught stealing. Shouldn't have looked. You'd have been caught 
doing everything and they just like blink blink what's your point what's your point doing the most heinous and atrocious things but will not bat an eyelash that's how you know you were a psychopath that's how you know I better get as far away from this person listen some of y'all ignore those red flashing lights, those caution signs, but baby, listen, listen to the train of that horn as it's getting ready to, to, to hit you and break you up on impact. A lot of y'all need to pay attention to the, to not just the warning signs, the flashing lights. It's some people out there hollering and screaming. Let me tell y'all something. Had, had I paid attention to when people around me was telling me homeboy was a psychopath and that he was going to hurt you, and, and had I paid attention to the words that was coming out of his mouth, I was so enamored. Oh my God, <laughs> he's an attorney and he likes me. Oh my God. Let me tell y'all something. I learned the hard way. I learned that thing the hard way. When I found out I wasn't the only cookie in the cookie jar. When I found out I wasn't the only woman he raped. When I found out I wasn't the only woman he drugged through the mud. When I found out that he just lied incessantly. Just, just because. Just because. I said, okay, Most High, I need you to help ease my hand out the lion's mouth because I knew I couldn't do it by myself. I couldn't do it by myself. This man would bang on my door at 2 and 3 in the morning knowing I had to be to work at 7 o'clock. Bang on my door. Call me nonstop. Let me tell y'all, ladies and gentlemen, it ain't cute. They're not after you just because they want you. They're after you because they want to ruin you. They want to take everything you got. They want to assume the position so they can take away your position. You better wake up and, 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 and smell the coffee. This is not a game. This is not a game. <laughs> Listen, this is not a game you want to play. I suggest you get up there on the sideline and tell the Lord, I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you and be of good cheer. That way you can strengthen my heart. Because if you mess around and dive in, and get hold of something, baby, tied, game, cheer or all, can't wash off with the psychopath when they get done with you. You're going to be crawling on your knees back to the most high saying, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but it's the truth. It may sound comical. I've been there and I've done that. I am so grateful that the most high showed me the part that I played in it. Sometimes when he tell you to take your feet out to Myra Clay and you just keep him there. No, it, it, I could change him. I could change him when he say move, when he say let it go, when he say get out the way, do it. Don't think you can change somebody with these psychotic ways. You are just but a mere cookie in the cookie jar. And you just go through rotations. I would, I, when I tell you I would be out with this individual and he would point out to me various women in the store, oh, I had her, or I was with her, oh, she mad because I don't want her no more. And I'm thinking, wait a second, something wasn't registering with me. I'm like, that's seven women and it is one visit. How you talk about seven women and we only been in the store less than an hour? I said, oh, heck, excuse me. I said, oh, hell no. I need to go pray. I, I need to pray. I needed to do something. And when he caught wind that I was trying to leave, that's when he attacked me. That's when he assaulted me to make sure I wouldn't go anywhere. But I had a praying, listen, I had a praying pastor. And I knew how to get in there and I knew how to pray. And I asked the Lord, you got to bring me out of this. And he brought me out. I promise y'all, I ain't never looked back. That man still follows me to this day. Cause I blocked him on all my social media, but he follows me on, on my plus size platform and stuff. I'm going to tell y'all something is, it's, it's nothing like getting out of the grips of a devil. That man was evil to the core, rotten to the core, rotten. But as long as you stay in it, they're going to break you down to your lowest common denominator. And I mean that. Lowest common denominator. They provoke jealousy and robbery while maintaining their cover of innocence. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. I'm going to go back to this old psychopath. I was um, getting off work one day, and I was going to the grocery store, and I knew I was one of the cookies in the cookie jars. 
And he was asking me, well, where you at? What you doing? Blah, blah, blah. I'm shopping. Y'all know when I got to the register, one of the other cookies was behind me in the line talking to him on the phone. He done described to this woman what I'm wearing. That's how dangerous they are. This fool, because I'm going to call it what it is, described this woman to a T, described me to a T, and she ended up right behind the line behind me, and I could hear him on the phone talking to her, saying, you found her? Yeah, she said, yeah, let me tell you, that the, the, the most high that I serve, the most high that I serve gave me the discernment and also opened up my ears that day to where I heard his voice on the phone and I said, wow. He orchestrated, tried to orchestrate a fight, tried to orchestrate a meetup to what to see if we was going to fight over him. Are you kidding me? I don't fight over man. I don't fight over nothing. You hear me? Now, I'm going to fight you over Eric Bendross, but I ain't going to fight you over no piece of community property. Honey, I hurried up and got my stuff, and I, I started to be, I could have, could have got in the gate and played on the playground, but I chose not to. I walked out of there with, with dignity. Dignity, I had my dignity and my integrity intact because it wasn't none for me to take my jewelry off and, and we're going to fight. But uh, again, my integrity, my dignity, and I don't like wearing orange jumpsuits. I wasn't about to go to TGK down there in Miami, so that's, that's a note. But I'm going to tell y'all, he tried to provoke jealousy. I mean, it's like, man, you ain't even nothing for me to get jealous over. Are you serious? But that's the thing. They think so highly of themselves. They think they the stuff when they really nothing. They, they admire you because they know you the stuff. And they, if they, they wish they could only have a fraction of the charisma, the integrity, the love, the nurturing, that's what sometimes draw these type of people to you because they want what you have. They want your stuff. And when they realize they can't have it, then they turn on you and try to, they tr listen, this man told me I'm going to sacrifice you. He said, for my kingdom to stand, if I have to sacrifice you, I will. I said, and just hearing the evil come out of his mouth. Some of us can be so blind and the psychopath could spell it out right in front of your face. I am going to rape you. I am going to abuse you. I am going to kill you. This man sent me videos of women being mutilated, women being cut up, women being beat. He sent me videos, y'all. He sent me, he sent me pictures of sawed off rifles. He sent me pictures of guns. And I'm like, well, what is your point? He said, I haven't pointed it yet. Then he said to me, we were driving to a restaurant. I'm telling y'all about a psychopath. He says to me as we're going to the restaurant, well, don't get mad if I take something. When I see something I want, I take it. Don't get mad. I take what I want. You take what you want. I'm thinking we're in the consent. Okay, well, whatever. Don't get mad. Don't get upset. This man was telling me I'm going to rape you. Don't get upset. Don't get mad. Just know that I'm going to take it from you. Just sitting there, just clueless. Just clueless. Then it, when, when it came plain, Kedra, when it became plain, that man said, in order for my kingdom to stand, I will sacrifice you. If it means my kingdom stands, I will kill you. I got as far away as I could from that individual. Here I am thinking we dating, we going out, it's consensual, we doing all this stuff. This man plotting to kill me the whole time. Plotting to hurt me the entire time. And people wonder why I don't let folks get up on me. Why Eric went through the ringer before we got married. Mm -mm. The man let it come out of his mouth, his intentions for me. He had made it plain. They will provoke jealousy and rivalry while maintaining their cover of innocence. Your psychopath partner once directed all of their attention to you, which makes it especially confusing. You like, well, dang, 
You saying one thing, but your actions are another. They make it especially confusing when they begin to withdraw and focus on other people. They do things that constantly make you doubt your place in their heart. If they're active on social media, they'll bait previously denounced exes with old songs, photos, and inside jokes. They attend to the competition's activity and ignore yours. Now, let me tell y'all something. That is the gospel truth. Here I am, because you all know I was Facebook Inspector Gadget. I don't do that no more. Because when you look for stuff, you'll find it. But this, this, these particular times, the Lord will say, open up your Facebook and look. Because he don't want his children going through this. Some of us are in some things because of our own free will, not his. We can't blame the devil. We can't blame nobody else but us. I stayed that long. Even after the most I started showing me little tidbits. I stayed that long. I sure did. But once he made it plain as day, took another woman, this woman, he was telling me, I'm going to take you out to eat, right? I'm coming to take you out. I got all dressed up. I got on social media. Saw he was in the car with another woman at the place that he said he was going to take me. I'm talking about a, so a psychopath. I'm talking about the behavior. I'm talking about how they have no remorse. And when I called him out on it, he just stood there and looked at me. I, I know I can do some really effed up stuff. Then why? And I said to him, I could have easily stayed with my abusive ex-husband. I'd have had a fighting chance over there with him than with you. Leave me alone. I meant that. Then when everybody, you know, this little game, oh, well, I'm finally yours, all the tears, and oh, man, you better get out my face. See, I think the most high, he gave me strength in the midst, in the time of trouble. Even in my folly, he never left me. Even when I put my feet in that mess, after he told me not to, he never left me. He never left me nor forsake me. Even when that man was harming me to the core, the Most High said, I'm going to bring you out of this. And I didn't understand why the Lord spoke to me and said, you will minister to women who've been raped. You will minister to women who've been pained. You will minister to women. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Don't you know it pains the Lord to see you go through this, but it's for your good. And I know, I know you're thinking, why is the suffering for my good? Why do I have to go through this? Why? Somebody got to be strong enough to tell the story. Somebody got to be strong enough to say, this how you come out of it. Somebody got to be strong enough and wise enough and bold enough and courageous enough to say, no, you won't do this to another person. No. Because while you're watching this broadcast, it's strengthening you. It's in making you bold. That way you can say, no, you're not going to do this to me. You're becoming wiser. It's not just a song, never would have made it. I'm stronger and I'm wiser. That's not just a song. That's a testimony. That is a testimony for somebody who's been through it. Been, been dragged through the mud, literally drugged. And the most high say, get up, because I'm going to make you pure as snow. Get up. You are my crown. You are my crown jewel. When I met my husband, he said, you are nobody's dirty little secret. You deserve to be out front. It's some days I just look up to the most high and I say, thank you. Because the woman that was then is not, would have not recognized the woman right now coming out of that abusive marriage. Yeah. Doing stuff I had no business doing. I thought the psychopath was my punishment because when the Lord tell you to stop and you still doing stuff you big and bad and bold enough to do, yeah, he'll allow some things to happen. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I should have not been with that psychopath. I should have just walked away. But no, I was enamored. I was enamored. I think I was two steps from a gold digger. Two steps from being a gold digger. And Lord said, I didn't create you for this. You was not designed to be nobody's girlfriend. What is wrong with you? 
You ain't designed to be nobody's concubine. What is wrong with you? The day I woke up and said, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. The Lord woke me up and he showed me my life. He showed me everything that he has prepared just for me. Now he said, you can take what you have now or you can take the place that I have prepared for you. I said, well, okay, Lord. It still took me a while, but I made it. Dating a psychopath, let me tell y'all something. That ain't, that ain't no joke. Having your, the narrative twisted, having your reality warped. And then they turn around and call you crazy. Then they turn around and call you jealous and call you insecure. And it's like, but I see what you're doing. I hear what you're doing. I can smell another woman's perfume on you, but you telling me something wrong with me. It's people out there who will do it to you. Your girl come home smelling like somebody's uh, gray flannel or whatever cologne brother wearing. You see she got a water cash in her purse, you know you ain't give it to her. All her little personal bills and stuff paid, you know you didn't give it to her. So what you thinking? Hmm, it is what it is. Open your eyes and see it for what it is because after today, after today, if you are watching this broadcast, you are inexcusable for staying in the same place that you are. You are inexcusable. You are hereby put on notice to rise up out of those ashes, to rise up and wipe those crumbs off your mouth that this bum giving you. Yeah, it's another form of bread crumbing. I'm going to do everything I can to mess your life up. And then once I got you messed up, I'm going to dangle other people in your face. The beautiful part is how I managed to get him away from me. I put up a picture of him, my Eric and myself. That stopped him for an instant. But then our wedding photos, he was putting hearts underneath our wedding photos. Sick bastard. You hear me? Sick. Sick bastard. Just a sick old bastard. You hear me? They do things that constantly make you doubt your place in their heart. They do this. They will. I'm sorry. You have something you need? Okay. <clears throat> They withhold attention and undermine your self-esteem. Let me tell you something. Ain't none like you in a relationship and they withhold the affection. They don't hold your hand. They don't kiss you. They don't tell you beautiful. They don't do nothing. So one day, I, I have to use this psychopath because I can't use my husband because he's not a psychopath. But I have to use this, this person. One day we were at the gym. And I was exercising and this guy came over and the guy was standing there staring at me. He, he attempted to help me. He was like, well, let me help you, beautiful. He got in the way and was like, no. That's the one thing they don't want. They don't want nobody competing for your affection because they know they ain't no good. They know once the blinders come off, once the spiritual blinders come off, then you're going you gonna to realize, wait, what am I doing with you? Let me tell y'all something. I think... The veil was so heavily, I believe there was some sprinkling down. Y'all know, for, for those of y'all who know anything about the sprinkling of the dust on people, that's the only reason I believe I got caught up with that one. Because there's no way in my right natural mind I would have got caught up with that man. Do you hear me? But he didn't want nobody else to tell me I was beautiful. Other men would say, ooh, she's so fine. I like to get to know her. She married. Get away from her. How you going to deter other people away from me? How you going to deter? And by that time, I was already single. How you going to deter people away from me when you know you don't want me? When you know you don't want me to, to live and have a happy life and have an abundant life and be with somebody who's going to love me for me and push me out to the forefront and not keep me in the back like I'm your dirty little secret. Not keep me hidden in the closet like I'm your little closet hoe or your little closet freak. I said it. They will treat you like a closet hoe. They ain't going to treat you like, oh, you know, because they got their little bottom hoes and they got their little side hoes. No, you the closet hoe. And, if, and, and listen, 
I have to keep it real. I have to keep it real. Whore is in the Bible. It really is. But they treat you like a closet hoe. You the one nobody ever see. They come knocking on the door two and three o'clock in the morning. Treat you like a jump off. Yeah. They knock you off and then they out the door. They don't even stay for coffee. They just come in, pump their little nastiness in you and leave out. And each time they leave, you're more broken. You're more broken than before. I'm going to tell you the joy of the Lord became my strength. And I would say, no, thank you. No, I don't want to have sex with you. No, I don't feel like doing the F word with you. No, I don't feel like you putting your mouth on me. No, I don't feel I had to be very verbal and vocal. No, I don't feel like you touching me. No, I don't want you near me. No, 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 thank you. Oh, I'm going to come take you out. Took me to the biggest, the best five star restaurants. Honey, I wasn't going to turn down no meal, especially when I know I had children to go home to. I got you. I took that. Oh, what do you want? French fries and chicken? No, I ordered $180 off that menu every single time I go. I'm going to show you who to, who to play with. I am not going to be your little jump off. I'm not going to be your little closet hoe. I'm not going to be none of that. I am blessed and highly favored. I never lost sight of the fact that I was blessed of the Lord and highly favored. Believe it or not, how can you still pray to the Lord and you were stuck in sin? The Bible declares you can, he, he, all things, I, I, behold, I made all things new. The day I told the Lord I was done, I was done playing games. The day I told the Lord, I repented wholeheartedly. Please pull me out of this. Please, I beg of you, this man has talked down to me and cussed me out. This man has told me some, showed me some of the most horrific. This man showed me a, a poor little donkey. Ooh, y'all got to pardon me because this is very, in it very emotional, but I need somebody to get delivered. It was a video he sent me and it still haunt me. Poor little donkey, cute little donkey. And you can hear this donkey crying. Little donkey tied up to a pole. And you're wondering why is this donkey, you could hear this donkey crying. Then, this, this little donkey, and then you see this big old massive horse come and rape this donkey. This, this horse practically mutilates this little donkey's vagina. And he said, this how I'm going to do you. psychopath. It's a sick bastard. This how I'm going to do you. Lady got cut up. He said, this how I'm going to do you if I ever find out you with somebody else. And I said, God, please, I'm begging you. If you get me out of this, I will never ever turn my back on your will I will never thank you Kedra I will never nothing will ever separate me from you ever again and here I am today doing the Nikki B show preaching to the masses telling y'all there's always another way you don't want to trade places I tell women, please don't get, don't, don't be in a predicament. Don't be in a room by yourself with a man because they will harm you or vice versa. Don't, just don't avoid at all costs if you can. Open Chrome, please. At all costs. I'm stronger. Thank you, Kedra. I'm stronger. I am truly wise. My husband tell you, I don't hold eye contact. I don't, I don't, I don't even, mm -mm. this the most men going to see of me is on Facebook because I, I will not, I will not place myself in a predicament. I will not be near, uh, uh I just can't, I just can't. And you're so welcome, Kedra. When you have a beautiful spirit, you have a beautiful heart, the ugly in people want it. They want what you have. And I know you're thinking, I probably don't. 
I probably, and you're thinking, I don't have that much. But you have the very thing they're incapable of doing, being loving, nurturing, being genuine. And they want to suck that out of you and watch you lay down and think, th and think you're going to stay down. But that's the beautiful part about the Most High's children. We don't stay down for long. Matter of fact, we don't even fall. We just glide and he bring us right back up. He never lets us fall. He holds us in his arms. He holds us. He snuggles us. He never lets us fall. I know some of y'all may be waiting on a wife. Some of y'all may be waiting on a husband. I will encourage you to wait on the Lord. I made up in my mind, I said, the next man I give my body to, it's going to be my husband. Guess what? It was my husband. Um, ooh, I think I almost skipped. Okay. They withhold attention and undermine your self-esteem. After once showering you with nonstop attention and admiration, the psychopathic partner suddenly seems completely bored with you because that's what they do. They treat you with silence and become very annoyed that you're interested in continuing the passionate relationship that they created. You begin to feel like a chore to them. And that's what happened. I said, well, you know what? See, I'm, I'm one person. I didn't mind walking away. I said, well, you know what? You want all that out there? KO so-and-so over there and go get it. Stay away from me. I'm good. And I wasn't even mad about it. The problem is they don't like to be rejected first. They like to be the one to do all the rejection. You Okay. Get away from me. Don't call me. I wouldn't answer the phone. Just, just all types of harassment. Then, they, then this one got smart. He started giving me all types of gifts. TVs, computers, jewelry, money, clothes, whatever. Whatever. Expensive dinners. Let's go on a trip. Mm -mm. I, knew, I knew enough not to get on no plane with that thing. Mm-mm. They exhibit selfishness and a crippling thirst for attention. When you are in a relationship with a psychopath, they drain the energy from you and consume your entire life. Y'all know this man was my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Calling me at work. Calling me while I'm driving. Calling me while I'm home. And then when he had my attention, he wouldn't call at all. The minute he felt my attention was slipping away, then he started doing it again. They demand for their demand for adoration is insatiable. You thought you were the only one that could make them happy, but now you feel that anyone with a beaten pulse could fit that narrative. Anybody that had a beaten heart and a vagina and a pair of breasts, or anybody that had a dangling swinging between their legs, could get their attention. And I mean just that. Uh, however, the truth is no one can fill the void of a psychopath's soul. You know why? Can't nobody feel that soul? Because they soulless. This man had no soul. He had a harem of women, but nobody could ever take care of that insatiable appetite. This bastard had a nerve to say to me, you the best I ever had in a long time. Oh, no. We're not doing that. Shut it down. I shut it down. Shut it down. Shut them. Shut them down. It is what it is. Close your legs. Stop giving them access to you. Stop giving them access to your heart. Stop letting them in. Stop answering the phone. Stop answering the door. Stop answering the text. Stop meeting them for dinner. Stop, stop, stop. Bada. Just stop. Save yourself all that heartache, pain, grief, and therapy bills. Because that's where you're headed. If you keep dancing with a psychopath, save yourself from that sinking Titanic because that's what's going to happen. It really is. It's not even worth it. It's not worth it. I'm so grateful that I gave the most. I let go. Okay, most high. I can't do this. My arm's too short in the box. Here you go. I can't do it. The Bible says, cast your cares upon me in not many days. Will you get a get a, a a a return? Here, here you go. Get it. Here, come. Let us reason together, honey. I I I, I almost crawled, literally, just crawling. Lord, I can't do it. He said, "Well, stop where you at, and I'm gonna help you right there." I I I was so beat down. 
Ooh, Lord, I was so beat down. Those were the worst two years after getting out of that marriage. I got out of the frying pan and jumped into fish grease. Psychopath was fish grease. You know, the frying pan is where it just heat up and it burn you a little bit. That fish grease scalded you. I said, okay, Lord, I can't do this no more. I'm done. I'm done. I will never step out of your will. Help me. Help me. Don't let me not let you. Help me make it through these changes. And he did. He blessed me in such a way I didn't have to even need homeboy's money. I didn't have to need nothing from him. Nothing. But he raped me. He sure did. Told me. <laughs> he told me, you made me feel like I was raping you. Then, oh, here's the kicker. I stopped talking to him and, and he called me. He goes, oh, you mad because I made you give it up? When I manhandled you and made you give it up? You see how that works? Do you see how that works? He raped me, told me I made him feel like I was raping. He was raping me, but then told me, oh, I manhandled you because I manhandled you and I made you give it up. That's the type of stuff I'm talking about. Twist the whole narrative. Had me thinking my judgment was wrong. Had me thinking I was just whatever. You know, he wasn't raping me. Had me thinking it was all me. That my, my brain and my thinking was all warped. No, that's not so. They will have you Seeing the truth with your eyes, hearing the truth, smelling the truth, tasting the truth, but telling you it's not. They will pee on you and tell you it is rain. That brother. Falling by the wayside. And he told me, so it, it, no, you need to go see a psychotherapist. That's how, listen, thank you, Kedra, but I'm okay. Kedra, I'm in such a better place that the Lord has me to where I'm able to be a blessing to people, to where I'm able to share the testimony that if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Some men are trapped with a psychopath and don't know how to do it. Brother, it's going to be all right. Better cut that booty go. Let that booty go. Let her go. Let her go. Ladies, let him go. Let that wallet go. Don't stay with him just because he's helping you pay your bills. But he's going to have you all thrown out of whack before it's over with. Uh, Kedra is a video that I did, Nikki's Story, part one and part two. came up missing you will find your joy again you'll find your peace you'll find your smile you will find your self-worth you will find all the fruits of the spirit because you let go of that and all the 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 the, the fruits of the what is that the 17 works of the flesh what is that called honey it's the fruits of the spirit but that's the the works of the flesh the 17 works of the flesh because that's what they come with they come with everything and they don't want to see you they don't want to see you have a relationship with the Most High. They want to see you downtrodden, begging and crying on their doorstep looking for them with a flashlight in the daytime. Yes, Mr. B. Well, I, I just want to say, I mean, you, you have really put yourself out there. Yeah. Uh, you made yourself vulnerable. Yeah. And I, I want to commend you, honey. But, um, ooh, this is a rough one. And it said, what you allow is what will continue. I prayed and I prayed and I fasted 
fasted and I prayed some more and I, and I just read my word and I did it all. And at first it didn't seem like it was working. It's like, come on, I'm in my word. I'm going to church. I'm reading my Bible, I guess, because I wanted it that microwave. I wanted it. I didn't get into that overnight. I wasn't going to get out of it overnight, right? One day I was on, on Facebook and I read that quote and the Lord said, you want this to stop? Yes. He said, well, what you allow is what will continue. Stop allowing it. Stop allowing him access to you. Stop allowing this toxic, nasty, filthy individual access to you, your heart, your gifts, your talent, your space. Stop it. Once he told me I manhandled you and I made you give it up, he had already raped me. He had already told me he was going to kill me. He had already sent me guns. He had already sent me mutilated pictures of women. He had already done so many different things. He had already done all of that. That one, that one quote, what you allow is what will continue. When the realization came that I had the power, because greater is he that When I realized the promises of, of Deuteronomy 28, when I realized that he said, even in your folly, I am with you. Even if you make your bed in hell, I am with you. I said, well, this is a living hell. He said, I'm with you. But what you allow is what you will continue. And I got up. I didn't get up on my own accord. He helped me up. I, I, he actually picked me and said enough is enough and that was it I put I ceased all communication enough is enough my husband at the time said you don't deserve that no he said no we're not doing that mm -mm. Mm -mm. I didn't know the precious jewel that I was or that I am I didn't know that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. I didn't know that he gave me power to call things that are not as though they are. I didn't know that I could tell that mountain to be moved and it, and it moved. Once I found out, I started exercising everything. I started praying and I started fasting more. I started enjoying life and experiencing life without him and it felt good to not have this dark heavy cloud hanging over me it felt so good to just not have this despicable creature near me that's the best word I can say what I get in them worldly terms now I can use them worldly words but it, it you, you, you know what I mean y'all I'm, I'm sure y'all get it y'all understand he was the scum of the earth the scum of the earth and I said Lord I thank you I'm grateful. Before I went to Japan in 2018, he tried to reach out to me again. He going to always try to pull you back. He going to follow two steps behind you. Just when you think he gone, he right there watching everything you do. I hope you're watching the broadcast today. I hope you are because you're a low down dirty dog. You deserve whatever it is you get in this life. Whatever it is that the Most High has prepared for you, you deserve every drop of it. I didn't say, my will be done. I said, his my will Lord if I if any at any given time where I choose to slip out of your will snatch me back pull me back and shake me back into reality that's the promise I commit my body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable I give it all to you 
I give everything to you. What does that song say? I submit my all unto thee, O Lord. I give it to you. Because without him, I know that this body, this vessel is nothing. I don't want you to ever trade places with what I've gone through. That's how I made it out. The most high. Just by him saying what you allow is what will continue. Are you still allowing this person to drag you through the mud? Are you still allowing this person to use you? Are you still allowing this person to put you in rotation? Are you still allowing this person to make you jealous? Are you allowing this creature from the pits of hell drag you through the mud and make you question your very existence are you still doing it do you want to come out then access denied shut it off block that number block listen block them on everything you can block them on go right ahead free yourself for the Lord will give us the necessary tools how to get out. Need for you to be. A babe in the in Christ. Some of you, no ma'am and no sir, do you honestly think you deserve to be in the back? Do you honestly think you deserve to be a side piece? Do you honestly think you deserve to be that one cookie in a jar of a hundred? Do you honestly think you deserve to be ghosted and only to be sur they surface every two to three months? Is that what you want? Is that how you want the rest of your life? Marriage, that's right, Keija. Uh, abusive marriage. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I identify with that. And I will be keeping you in my prayers. Listen. That abuse. Girl, that's a show for me. You got to find Nikki's story part one. The abuse and being told you don't have a le no leg to stand on. That man told me I'm, I'm going back to the ex-husband. Without the abuse, you don't have a leg to stand on to divorce me. Not I said the cats. And not better than you. She gonna be look better than you. She gonna have a bigger ass. I'm, I'm just telling you what he said to me. She gonna have everything and you gonna have nothing. That's what they say to you. You ain't gonna find nobody that ever loved me. But you put your hands on me. That ain't love. We just saw on the news last night, this man killed this woman, put her in a garbage bag and put her in the front seat of her Jeep and closed the door. Just left her out there in the parking lot. They had been fighting, fighting, fighting. I told the Lord, thank you for delivering me from that. Because homeboy told me, this is the ex-husband, had I not left you, I probably would have killed you. You, you, you. you hear what I'm saying? Well, he couldn't kill me in the marriage. He tried to kill me with Mr. Mr. And he coming for you. But I'm going to tell you something. The Most High lives down on the inside. And he keeps me. It's some days, y'all, I wake up emotionally. I don't know where I am. But the Most High will settle me. Because when, when I go back, I go back so I can pull people forward. I, I don't like going back talking about this stuff. But when I go back, it's because I need to pull somebody. Wait on the Lord. 
Wait on him. Declare in your mind you are a husband and not a boyfriend. Declare that you are a wife and not a girlfriend. Tell your body you weren't designed to be nobody's concubine. You weren't designed to be nobody's side piece. They jump off. You weren't designed to be that. And mean it. And deny all access. When they call to, to find you, you, let them see that block. Access denied. Let them see that screwdriver with that Facebook put up where nobody can't find you after they don't block that page. I only go back so I can pull somebody forward. That's it. There's no emotional um, sorrow. There's only the idea that somebody ain't going to have to go through this. That somebody going to get their feet out that miry clay. That somebody going to step out that quicksand without a ladder. That somebody going to come up out that thing shining like pure platinum. That's why I do what I do. That somebody's soul going to be saved. Somebody going to be going to be spared <laughs> that somebody is going to realize who they are, that they are precious and they're going to stop giving those pearls to that pig. Yes, Mr. B. So I'd like for you to talk about, cause you, you may have some ladies, maybe some men that are watching you right now saying, well, yeah, things are, are bad. But they ain't that bad. Let them know about they start off uh, very charismatic. They oh, yeah. Off, and it's a build up. Yeah. So watching for those signs, you know, mm -hmm. not that you looking to place somebody in that position. Oh, you a psychopath or oh, no. oh, you a bad person. Just the signs that I saw. Yeah, because this okay. folk out there that they in a rough spot and they don't even know how rough it's going to get. Well, it starts off easy like Sunday morning. It starts off, let me tell you, we went everywhere. We did everything. Okay. We did everything. I'm talking up and down to every fancy restaurant there was. Showed me a different way. Because, you know, here I am a mom with two sons, two young sons. I'm working this little uh, job. That don't don't pay me much and it's like came in swooped in y'all know they say the lord come in like a thief in the night this one felt like my knight in shining armor oh my god yeah he's an attorney he has money he has this he's driving me around in his fancy car little did i know there was dr jekyll and mr hyde when i tell you the first month and a half after that no call, no show. You, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? We were in a consensual thing, right? It was consensual. Oh, yeah, they was coming back for that. Oh, yeah, it was no denying. There was no denying they wanted the snapper. No denying they wanted sex. No denying at any given time if I open my legs up, they'll come over there and get it. Even though... They had all the cookies in the cookie jar. They just can't resist having the forbidden cookie. All the cookies in the jar, but they want that. They, they want yours. Even though they done laid up with 50, 11 dozen women, but they want yours. Y'all got to excuse me. This, this here wig get you. <laughs> I keep it real. I ain't going to lie to y'all. But. He couldn't, he, he, look, knocking on the door. Come on, let's go to dinner. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do this. Because he, as soon as he would see, I'm very strong. I was very strong. But the thing is, they try to break you. And when they see they can't break you, they come even harder, even harder. Then when they see they can't break you, they come with the violence. Just pay attention to those red flags. I want you to pay attention to the little subtleties. Yes? Hold on, hold on. Let, let me interject right there so you're saying yes that he got you invested right yeah so he didn't start off as uh mr hyde it was, it was dr jekyll right put the the ooey dooey you oh know. yeah looked at me and was like oh you high class even told mm. me i was a i'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all i'm gonna tell y'all about the devil the devil will tell you the truth but it's 
covered in lies. He said to me, why are you down here with the chickens? You belong in the air with the eagles. You don't belong down here with us. Uh, why? He said it to me. I, I was looking at Instagram, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, why are you down here with us chickens? Don't you know you belong in the sky, in the air with the eagles? You need to stop being down here picking up crumbs and going in the air where you belong. So they'll pump you up. Oh, yeah. They'll, they'll be the wind in your sails. Try and to And at some point, it switch. Did, it, did that switch come fast and hard? Yeah, it did. The switch came so fast and so hard that I felt like the wind was snatched out of me. Ooh. It went from, I'm going to take you everywhere. We finna do everything going out. Here come stuff. Here come money. Here come this and this and that. And I'm going to ignore you for seven days. I'm not going to answer your call. I'm not going to answer your text. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to, I see you on social media and I'm going to make sure after you call me through social media and write me, I'm going to put up a post and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to share everybody. I'm going to make sure you know who I'm sleeping with. I'm going to make sure you know how to connect the dots. Very smart. They're very cunning, but I'm also very smart too. And I connected the dots. And when I presented the information, how you, yeah, yeah, mm -mm. they already know. They know what they're doing. Don't, don't let them pretend. Don't let them pretend. Oh my God, I didn't know. I, yeah, you knew it. But so your advice to women today, I think would be. Run. Yeah, I, don't even let it get that far, right? Run, run. So, because you mentioned about you connected the dots, you presented it with him and haggling. Mm -hmm. At that point, if you knew now... It, it, I would have listened to the Holy yeah. Spirit who said, run. What you... Run. Period. Period. I wouldn't even entertain his text. I wouldn't entertain... No negotiation. Nothing. Oh. Nothing. 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 Zilt. Zitch. Nada. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nothing. I promise you, it took bleach to get this off of me. Yes? Uh, Sister Patricia Williams says, uh, thank you, woman of God. She says she needed this today. Oh, y'all going to make me cry. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, beautiful sister. You're welcome, beautiful sister. I wasn't... Um, planning on doing this today. Eric and I was going to talk about dating during the pandemic. But I told him, I said, no, the most high said psychopath. And I told him I can't let it go. Sometimes when it's in my spirit, I can't let it go. When it's so strong and so heavily pressed into my spirit, it's because he got his children who need this, who, who, who been praying for a sign, who been praying for a way out who been praying, Lord, sometimes the words that come out of our mouth are not our own. I'm not up here speaking because, oh, it's the Nikki B show. No, I'm up here speaking because he gave me the words to speak. Sister, you're welcome, honey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I tell people quick, don't give me no glory. Give it to him. Because without him, I am absolutely, positively nothing. I am nothing without him. He brought me from the who out of the dust. He made me. He blessed me. Even when people, when all people could see is my outward appearance and think, think what you want to think, but y'all just don't know. You don't know how much. What's that song? It's the God in me. You don't know how much I gave. You don't know how much I prayed. You don't know how many times I turned down my plate. You don't know the cost of the oil in this here bottle. You don't know the cost of the oil. You have no idea. Yes, I'm a plus size model. Yes, 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 and yes. Because the most high You've been on said, national television. You've been around the yes, world. Yes, I have. Yeah, yes. all that good stuff. But... Nobody knows the cost. No. What you've been through. Nobody knows. Nobody know. Don't can't nobody tell your story better than you can. Can't nobody come up and tell a Nikki B story better than me. Many it's it's imposters. They're gonna come up and say, Well, child, I know, baby, you don't know nothing. You think you 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 don't even know my you 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 know my past, but you don't know my present, and you definitely don't know my future. So go ahead, sisters, free yourself. Get free. 
That you, you still have that narrative. Th thank the Lord for what he did. Thank the Lord for what he's doing now. And thank him for what he will do. Thank him. Praise him in advance. I know y'all hear me because I, I listen. Whew. He is worthy because he brought you this far. He brought you this far and he didn't leave you. I told my husband, I said, even in my sin, even in the sin that I put myself in, he didn't leave me. How do I still have my right mind? It's because of him. How can I still wake up in the morning? It's because of him. How can I still love, genuine love, this Despite everything that I've received along the way, greater is he that lives in me than he that is in this world. Even being beat down, even being mistreated from childhood all the way up, I knew in my heart there had to be an opposite to this pain. There had to be an opposite. And I said, I would love my children in the opposite that I received. That I would love my husband in the opposite. Was I an angel? Oh, no. No, I did not. I wasn't an angel. I did the things I saw other people do. Man, she could do it. I could do it too. Honey, the Lord didn't, the, he didn't make me to go over there in Satan's graveyard and play. He didn't make me to go back across it. By the time that fella was done with me, I was, listen, I had to, the Lord had to help me back over on his side. Uh-huh. He had to, you, you ever seen somebody just crawl and like slide and just try, honey, I didn't have even enough strength to pick myself up. He scooped me right back over. He said, you ready now? You ready to do what I called you to do? You ready? Yes. You ready? Yes. Anytime he said, oh, I'm up. my husband tell you, the Lord said, do something. I said, ah, the Lord didn't say that. He said, okay. <laughs> he said, okay, 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 okay. The Lord didn't tell me to do that. I obey him and him alone. When I tell my husband, the Lord said this, he, 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 he'd be like, okay, we got this. We, we writing it down. We tallying it up. When he speaks, honey, what that song said, you don't have a choice in the matter. All the storms got to stop. Y'all know I feel my help coming. I feel my help coming. I feel my help coming. Thank you for making it, Brother Terrence. We're talking about psychopaths. How you know you with a psychopath? Always go. I need you to uh, probably go back and um, hit the replay button. But thank you for making it. Um, I'm so glad I made it. I am so glad that the Lord brought me. He moved my hand out the lion's mouth. Trust me, y'all. That wasn't the only psychopath I encountered. That's just the one I, I told you about. But if you listen to Nikki's story part two, you're going to say, girl, you are a warrior. Yeah. Yeah. People say, oh, my God, why are you so vicious? And, you know, because do you know I'll re-listen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, why are you so protective? Let me tell you, I'm very protective of my children. I'm protective of my husband. I'm definitely protective of, of, of everything. But when it, when it comes to me, I told the Lord, you give me the strength to do, to do your will. Give me the strength to, to, to set the captives free. You give me the strength because your strength is what I need to get this done. When he brought me out of that thing, ooh, look at here. I'm still in recovery. That's a good thing. I am in, in, in recovery just knowing I don't have to see that thing, knowing that I don't have to be near that creature who told me he would kill me, that psychopath, that psycho, I'm so blessed and I'm so highly favored. Yes, Mr. Bishop. And I, I just want to say, everybody on this live, please share, share, share. This word needs to get out. It's a powerful word. It is. Now, you have something before we go. Oh, okay. You have something to is share. Is it 2 because, o'clock Because I don't want no, to No, no, it, it's not. We still got time, but I want to make sure face. we get in um, what, uh, because people are hearing you speak. Yes. 
and Excuse they me. may not know. They know they need to get out, right? Yes. But some folk need some help because they don't have any other resources. Well, help is available. Um, speak with someone today. The National Sexual Abuse Hotline. Okay, it's open 24 hour, hours a day, and I want you to learn to learn more. Dial 1-800-656-4673. 1-800-656-4673. Help is available for you. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I had to go through, listen, being diagnosed with battered wife syndrome, PTSD, being raped, codependency, being raped several times. I'm, when I tell you several, that's why I'm very leery of anybody, especially a man coming near me. Just, just don't. All the fellas that love to push up on me and... Listen, that's all fine and good. You can push up on me from afar, but don't come near me because I will punch you out. I'm being very oh, honest. Honey, you ain't going to have to do that. Thank you, that's, baby. That's my job. Thank you, baby. Oh, yeah. It ain't even going to get that far. Thank you, baby. Yeah. Uh, also on that page, too, as well, is a number for, say, you know, the ladies and, and uh, gentlemen, well, I'm not being sexually abused, but... I'm being abused. I'm being, you mentioned battered wife syndrome. Yeah. So there's help for you as well. Uh, the national. It's 1-800-799-SAFE. Uh, 1-800-799-SAFE. So um, I'm alive. I'm blessed that I'm on the other side. Y'all, as, as I told, uh, told on last week, I graduated with my, my, um, degree in political science and now I'm starting a new one in sociology um I want to be able see I've got the life skills but I want to be able to have that piece of paper because when it's time to free more souls I want to be able to be abreast on everything but I'm thank you brother Terrence um it's by his grace by his mercy and his goodness that I'm still here. I'm grateful for the gifts that he's given me. I'm grateful. I can't even begin to tell y'all how grateful I am that the Lord brought me out. He brought me out of so many dark situations where my hands was in the lion's mouth. I ran into another one who had a barrage of guns and, and um, grenades and everything. I said, Lord, God, what am I in the wrong zip code? What is it? I was broken. When you broken, you you attract everything. I'm so glad you said that because I was just going to, if you could speak directly mm -hmm. to that lady, because they're seeing you now, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're saying, well, either they feel like this is what I deserve. Somehow, oh, God, no. Or... Or they're saying, well, I'm not capable. I'm not like you, Nikki B. I'm not as outgoing. I'm not as outspoken. But you weren't always like this mm -hmm. as well, right? I, I came up in, in abuse. I came up. Abuse became, it, 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 it was like first nature, not second nature. It was first nature. It was like, oh, this is normal. This is, they this can is. do it too, right? Yes. They're capable as well. You. The you don't I deserve it. You. you don't you you don't deserve it. You don't deserve to get beat down. You don't deserve to get mentally, physically and emotionally beat down and sexually. You don't deserve that. Nobody deserves that. I invite you to lean in. I invite you to let go. You deserve so much better. You deserve love. You deserve to be treasured. You deserve not to be tolerated. You deserve to be loved and have somebody put their arms around you. You deserve, you deserve that. You deserve to be able to speak your mind and not have somebody beat your opinion out of you or have somebody tell you when I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. You deserve you deserve that and more. You deserve love. You deserve joy. Kedra, you deserve love. You don't deserve to be knocked down, dragged, 
hit, spat on, kicked, black eyes, swollen forehead because I've been there. I wore it all. You don't deserve that, sister. How I am the way I am. Now, I'm so outspoken. I don't even play fight. I don't even play fight. And I ask God to help me. I ask y'all, help me. Because if I see their daddy on site, I may just, because I'm, I'm and the Lord blessed me and my baby looks so much like his parent, but he not his parent. And I'm going to tell you the beautiful part that I told the Lord there's got to be an opposite. I'm going to do the opposite because some mothers can't distinguish between their abuser and when the child look like the abuser. I looked at my baby and I saw an innocent, sweet child and I loved on my baby. I love them and they, sh they, they went through it with me. Let me tell y'all something. When he left, oh, hallelujah. When he left, that man said, y'all act like slaves who done been freed from their master. We were free. Cause the Bible says whom the son sets free is free indeed. I am free. I don't have to walk around in defeat. I don't have to walk around in shame, walk around and hide the black eyes and hide the bruises. Oh, trust and believe. He just hit me and I let him do it. I stuck him and knocked and lumped him up too. But why should I have to fight you? We took vows. Why we gotta do this? Okay, brother, do it by yourself. Do it by yourself. Do you, be you, do your thing. Don't come over here. We done, we done. What they say, you're, you're done. I told the Lord, thank you. Honey, if you out of that, tell the Lord, thank you. Most people tell you the Lord don't, y'all I'm a wig slip, excuse me. <laughs> a lot of people tell you the Lord don't approve of divorce. The Lord ain't create you to be nobody's punching bag. And I'm so sick of that. People in the church telling people to stay there and take it. I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says if somebody hit your cheek, turn the other cheek. I ain't there yet. I'm not going to lie to you because you slap me, I'm going to slap you back. But I wouldn't dare tell anybody to stay in that and the Lord don't approve of it. I wouldn't dare. I can't even tell, I can't even begin to tell you how, how many times I was told to stay there, it's going to be all right, and to pray for him. And the, and the more I prayed, the more evil and the more heinous and the more nastier he got. Then I'm going to tell you, one of my brothers, one of my, yes, he was jealous. Yes. Ooh, ooh, Terrence. Ooh, Terrence, Terrence. Ooh, Terrence. Terrence asked, was he jealous of me? That man say, why God always bless you and not me? Why God always give you and not me? Why you always have good things happen to you and not me? He couldn't understand when a blessing for one is a blessing for all. Ooh, y'all got to excuse me. <laughs> he couldn't understand a blessing for one is a blessing for all. I went on the match game a while back, right? My husband already know what's, what, whatever come for Eric, come for, for Nikki. Whatever come for Nikki, come for Eric. But this one couldn't understand. Why when I pray the Lord bless you and he don't bless me? Don't you know when the Lord bless your spouse, he blessing you? Or, 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 but, but he couldn't get past himself. Operating in the spirit of jealousy. It was always why you got more than me. Why your colleague better than mine? Why, 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 why? It's like, man, why are you asking me? Why don't you ask the Lord? Why you always, why the Lord, why you always got to go to church? Why we always got to give this? Why? Let me tell you something. Even when that man told me you give too much, I kept giving. I would take my purse and shake it out on the altar here because I knew I couldn't beat the most high giving. I wasn't giving it unto the church. I was giving it to him. I was giving it with a cheerful heart. I was giving it, Lord, here. I am bound. Help me get out of this. And one pastor said to me, God, girl, you got such a sweet spirit. He say, every bill, two pastors, every bill you ever have, the Lord going to meet every need. 
from this point on, every bill that you have, the Lord is going to meet. I promise you, he ain't failed me yet. Even when I feel like, oh my God, this is hard. Even when I got the past notice bill, even when I got due now, he still ain't failed me yet. I don't know about somebody else, but I feel my help coming. I can't talk to no baby. Listen, I feel my help coming. Deliverance. I feel my help coming. The Lord brought me out of that. Let me tell y'all again, Nikki story part one and part two. I'm going to reshare it. I'm going to advise y'all, you got to be prayed up to hear it. <laughs> you got to be prayed up to hear it. It is the price for favor rest upon you. Let me tell you something. I used to ask the Lord. I used to always say I am blessed and highly favored. I went, now mind y'all, I was taking my son to the doctor. My son had got uh, sexually abused, right? You know, my baby got, both of my babies got hurt. And I said, Eric, you, you a blessing. Eric came into a home with three rape victims. <laughs> Can you imagine? We had to hold each other. We had to, Winston, Xavier, and myself, we had to hold each other. We became such a unit. We loved one another. We, and, and people always say, you, you do everything for those kids because I was the only parent that did it. The parent was present, but he was absent. He was an absentee present parent. Wanted to watch TV all day. Tell the children to shut up and get away. My son used to say to me, my eldest son used to say, Mama, I'm so sorry. He said, I know I, I, I tell you everything. I said, he said, you only one person. I said, it don't matter. Tell me a thousand times a day. Tell me as many times as you need to tell me. See, you don't know the cost of the oil. Everybody's so enamored with my little jewelry and my hair and all of this stuff, but you don't know the cost. You're so enamored. Oh, she done been on TV and she thinks she all that. You don't know the cost of the oil. You don't know. And you got some people, even though they know, they don't care. They just need a reason. Like Brother Terrence said, oh, she's so arrogant. Oh, she thinks she all that. What else am I supposed to think? Am I supposed to think lowly of myself because the most high brought me through this? You crazy. Yeah, now conversations with Brother Terrence. Yes. He, he only letting <laughs> us know what some folk be thinking. Yeah. What some folks want to say and ain't courageous enough to say it to my face or oh, someone bold enough to tell me you fat you this shit. And i could care less call me fat i'm jiggling all the way to the bank now what <laughs> i'm jiggling baby go ahead baby yeah jiggling baby all the way to the bank baby i am the head and not the tail i am above and not beneath I am the lender and not the borrower. Do you hear me? Declare and decree that over your life every day until it manifests itself here on earth. I deserve. I deserve it all. What that song say, you deserve it, baby. You deserve it all. Oh, that's right. Hi, handsome. He said, remember Jay Leno when... <laughs> <laughs> Remember Jay Leno called you beautiful? I'm going to get Jay flirting with my wife. He said, you know, they got hot when Linda spoke. <laughs> Stop it. I'm trying to be serious, Terrence. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I just wanted you to come on here and encourage you. I didn't know it was going to turn into this. I thought it was going to just be me talking about psychopaths, but I didn't know again. Well, when this the, is all relative. The Lord will have you to go back into those dark places to pull somebody out. He'll have you go back. And I'm grateful that he had me to go back. And I, as I was saying this morning, Eric and I was talking about doing something else. And I'm like, I can't let this go. It's in here because I was feeling sick. And sometimes when I have to bring a word from the Lord, I get so sick. And then as I'm, as I'm giving it, I start to feel better. Well, what kind of pastor you is all dressed up looking like that? Somebody who the Lord called me to be. Well, I'm serious. He did this, not me. <laughs> he, 
He did all of this. And I'm, and I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And I'm, and I'm so thankful. You're not stupid. Don't you say that. <laughs> but you are cool. We love you. Um, I'm just excited about your deliverance, excited about your journey, excited about what he's doing in your life and where he's taking you. Because trust me, this journey right here ain't over. It's so much work that I have to do. But I'm grateful that he's given me the platform to do it. I'm grateful that um, he calls me friend. Y'all know Fred Hammond has that song, I'm Overwhelmed, that he calls me friend. And he says, hey, daughter, I love you. He wakes me up. And, and some days I, when I don't sleep well, he'll say, okay, you need to lay down and go to sleep. All of that other stuff will wait. I need you to replenish. I need you to um, focus. So don't think just because I can come up here and I can give you the word and, and tell you what the Bible says and, and speak on certain aspects that I don't go through. I do. I think I go through it a lot harder because of the calling on my life. So I'm going to close out, but I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray with y'all. I need you to stretch your hands to heaven. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your many blessings. Lord, I honor you. We honor you. We adore you. And we thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the gift of the rising of the sun and the going down of the same. We thank you for letting your spirit rest, rule, and abide in our lives. Thank you for the gift of deliverance. Thank you for the gift of freedom. Thank you for the gift of mercy. Thank you in advance for everything that you have done, that you are doing, and that you will do. Thank you for allowing deliverance to flow through and reach your people. Whether it be in a different language, I ask that you let the Holy, the Holy Spirit translate it where it can touch their hearts and let them know freedom belongs to them and salvation belongs to them. Salvation is a gift and we should treat it as such. You are so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Won't no rock cry out for me. Hallelujah is the highest praise. I want to thank you and I want to honor you, Lord, for how you are blessed your people, for how you have opened up their hearts to receive, that you have blessed them to pour new wine into new skin. As I give you the honor and the glory and I give you all the praise for how you are blessing your people, your people, how you making your face to shine down upon us, your people. Thank you, y'all, for being our rock, our sword, our shield, our strong tower, our provider, our protector, our healer, our deliverer, and most importantly, our redeemer. These things we thank you in advance. We declare victory. We honor you and adore you in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. All right, guys. <laughs> this has been Say What Wednesday. I am your host again, Nikki B, the elegant and regal one. Uh, I pray that this broadcast was an added blessing. I pray that it met you right where you were. I pray it was the words that you needed to hear. I pray that it was a, a, a blessing. It blessed you beyond measure. Now I ask that you go back and, and share this, share the broadcast, share it, share it, click like and share, and just let it be a blessing. If it's blessed you, pay it forward that it can be a blessing to somebody else. So, um, all right, guys, I want to thank you again for allowing me to your homes. Y'all know my motto, the struggle is real, but the journey is worth it. Remember, Nikki B, the elegant and regal one. I will see you guys again on Say Something Saturdays. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>